Hi everyone, so this is our pre-lab for lab 6, the spectrophotometric titration of copper with EDTA. Uh, again, uh, some, some of you may be seeing uh, some of this material for the first time here in lab. Uh, we will be getting to much more depth in class, so um, you, know, you won't need to understand all the nuance to be able to perform the lab, but uh, just bear with us and you'll get, we'll get to it in class, but of course don't hesitate if you have any questions to ask. Uh, so, uh, so uh, this lab is dealing with this uh, titration of copper with EDTA. So this is what we call EDTA, the structure here. You see, uh, we will refer to it with this uh, as Y, just to simplify it. Uh, I'll, you, I'll get to that later. All right. And so we see that Y in this Y2 minus form preferentially binds copper and it binds it really strongly. All right. And so this essentially binds it. Uh, uh, completely. So uh, if there's any copper or if there's any EDTA and any copper around, all of the copper is going to be bound by this EDTA here. And so if we look at a different structure, this one comes from your book. In this case, it's in copper, uh, but this sort of gives you an idea, right? So this is your EDTA structure over here. You can see how it sort of wraps around and binds, uh, binds the metal. So this is called chelation or complexation, right? And so EDTA is what we call a ligand or ligand, uh, depending on how you pronounce it, and it is a what we call multi-dentate. Right? What that means is that it has multiple locations where it will bind its uh, its substrate. In this case, in our case, we're going to be dealing with copper. And so dentate comes from the word teeth, so you think about it, the teeth are sort of the things that are sort of clamping on to its substrate. Right? So smiley face, multi-dentate, right? So many teeth, okay? That's our EDTA. Uh, so here's a full name of EDTA. Uh, it's 1,2-ethylene-diamine, N, 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 tetra acetic acid. All right, so you can see why we just call it EDTA. And EDTA, if we look at it, this is just the same structure. Uh, this is the same molecule of EDTA, just written in a different way, and you can see that there's actually six different locations uh, where we could add protons, right? So this is a really complex uh, weak acid, weak base system, and it will be dictated uh, by this uh, long series of equilibrium reactions. And so this is only dri drawn one way, but these are actually equilibrium. Each one of these is an equilibrium, acid base equilibrium. Each one has a different pKa. And in between each of these, uh, you know, P, uh, P, so if you look at pHs, right, uh, the pH is going to dictate the form that the EDTA is in. And that's, as we may remember from class, the Henderson Hasselbach describes that. And so these are the pKa's of the different uh, forms of EDTA. And this is, you can see why we simplify it with the, with the as, as a Y structure, because it just gets complicated to write out EDTA all, all over the place. And so what we're going to be doing in this class, we're going to be using a buffer. And that buffer is going to be, where is it? That buffer is going to be at 4.7. And you guys are going to make this buffer in class as well. And so you'll see uh, pH of 4.7 says that your predominant form should be right here. So this is in between pKa4 and pKa5. Just see pKa4 and pKa5. The form between between that is your Y2 minus structure, uh, which is this one right here. And again, if you remember, this is the one that preferentially or that very strongly and tightly binds copper. And the nice thing about this is that uh, when it's bound to copper, this bound complex here absorbs strongly at 600 nanometers. And so you can watch this complex form uh, using a spectrometer, and you guys are going to do that in class. And so, and what's what's even nicer is that the unbound form does not absorb uh, at 600. And so that way we can detect uh, we can detect as this complex forms. And so what we'll end up seeing is uh, well, end up generating a titration curve that looks something like this. Okay, so when we're looking at our our corrected absorption, and this is going to be at 600 nanometers, All right? And so as we add 
our titrant. In this case, our titrant is EDTA. Um, so as we add titrant in, remember I said that this forms completely uh, forms this complex here. And so every time you add in the ETA, it's going to form more of this uh, species, this complex species, until we run out of copper. And then it's going to stop forming it. And what you'll see is because this complex absorbs like 600, we're going to see this absorbance increase. And it's going to increase until we run out of copper, and then it's going to tail off. And so from this, from the shape of this curve, you'll be able to see where, uh, where, the, where, the, uh, where we've completely reacted with, with all, where our titrant and our, which is ETA, where our ETA and our copper are a one-to-one -to -one -to -one ratio. And so this is our endpoint, and your endpoint, your EDTA equals uh, your copper. And so in this way, we'll be able to determine, because you know the concentration of EDTA, you know how much you've added, you'll be able to determine the amount of copper. And I just want to show you one little trick about this, and how we're actually going to find this is, is uh, not simply by visually just looking at it. What we'll do is we'll create two calibration curves. Because right? you can see there's sort of two general regions here. There's one that's before the equivalence point, and one after the equivalence point. And before the equivalence point, what you'll do is you'll, you'll basically fit two linear regressions, right? And so you take one linear regression, which will be before, which is the green color here. And you'll fit a line. Let's say it looks something like that. Right? And you'll base this off of data points that you've collected. Right? And so just like we've done in, in class many times with our calibration curves, you'll fit one line this way. And then after you, we get to the equivalence point, we're going to fit a second curve. All right. And so that, you'll have something that looks like this. And you can fit that line. Ah! <laughs> Sorry, let me get rid of that. Um, so after we get past the equivalence point, you can fit a line to that. Hopefully you get a straighter line. All right. And the, the intersection where these two meet is your equivalence point. And so you can actually solve that mathematically uh, by using, right, you're going to get for your green, uh, for, your, uh, for your one line here that I show you in green, you're going to have the y equals mx plus b. And for your purple line, which I have here, which is after the equivalence point, you'll also get a separate y equals mx plus b. And so if you set them equal to each other and solve for x, right, you'll get something that looks like this. You have your purple line mx plus b equals your green line mx plus b. Right, you rearrange this, you solve for x, um, and that will tell you uh, what your concentration is right here at your endpoint. Because that is the point where these two cross, where the y's are equal to each other. All right, so you're going to do this. Uh, you're going to do a number of replicates of this, and so you're going to be able to determine uh, your equivalence point, which will tell you how much copper you have in your unknown, and you should be able to develop a standard deviation from that. And and just to show you here, so so there's going to be something else going on. So when you plot your absorbance, you'll see on the y-axis here, it says corrected absorbance. The reason it says corrected absorbance is because uh, as you add more titrant, you're actually going to be diluting your solution, and so you're going to be uh, essentially decreasing the overall absorbance, and so you need to do a slight correction factor. And so this is an equation here where it shows you, right, here's your initial volume, here's your added volume divided by your initial volume. This is the thing right here is your, your correction factor, dilution correction. All right, so this is how you'll get your corrected absor absorption. That's what you'll use for your uh, y-axis there. All right, so in this class, so in this lab, it's going to be uh, relatively simple. We're going to make EDTA, right? And you want to make sure you do a good job uh, massing this out because this is going to be your your standard. Okay, so you're going to weigh this by difference. You're going to make this. This is going to be your titrant, and then you're going to make 
an acetate buffer. Okay, and so this I uh, give you instructions on how to do that. You want to make sure after you do that, you check the pH. Make sure it is at 4.7. And then you're going to make it unknown. I'm actually going to be giving you the unknown, but you're going to have to dilute it to the right, uh, effect, uh, right volume. And then you're going to be titrating. Okay. So then you titrate, and then you plot the data, just like I showed you, and then you'll uh, determine your equivalence point and find out how much copper was in your unknown. All right. Uh, so if you have any questions, I'll see you in lab on Tuesday.